Hello everyone, I am Dr. Devdatta Das, presently working as assistant professor in the Bardhavan University Department of Law and I shall be dealing first with the topic status of victims in criminal law and procedure. Victimization is not an uncommon phenomena in the society. Criminal justice system was devised to protect the rights of the innocent and punish the wrongdoer. In order to do the same, the victims in many cases are under recognized or ignored as crimes are initially considered as offenses mainly against the state. Beginning in the 1970s, reformers sought to change the emphasis of the criminal justice system from the offender's rights to the victim's need. Concept of victim. Victimology has been defined as the scientific study of the victims of the crime, victims of human rights violation, of victimization and the reactions to both crime and human rights violations. It studies and reflects reaction and counter reactions and sometimes relationships between both the reactions of the various parties involved in the process of victimization including the state. The term victim had its source in the Latin term victima which contained the concept of sacrifice. This sacrifice implies the sacrifice of one's rights, property, peaceful conditions of living, security etc. With the growth and maturity of the justice delivery system and the role of the state as a whole, it was realized that recognition of the rights of the victims is a sine qua non for an effective and welfare oriented working of the state sponsored justice system and the responsibility of the wrong done to the victim should be borne by the offender or the person responsible or the state if the situation demands so. But the victim should be rationally compensated or allowed justice for the harm suffered under all circumstances. It is interesting to note here that Manu has provided to the victim of crime direct reparation apart from making the payment of fine to the king. As per ancient laws, Yajnavalkya, Narada and Brihaspati provide for an amount of compensation double the amount of purchase money and a fine of an equal amount in cases when sale of goods was made fraudulently or people knowingly and intentionally do not disclose the defect of the goods. Restitution and atonement was recognized even during the Islamic period. However, the concept of victim was formally defined in India under section 2 subsection WA of the CRPC only after the 2008 criminal procedure code amendment which has been discussed in detail subsequently. Victimological jurisprudence in India had its take off with the liberal interpretation of article 21 of the Indian constitution. The judicial activism of the apex court gave birth to the realization of the rights of the victims in India in reality. These victims mainly included the victims of the criminal justice system. The landmark pronouncements made in the Husainara cases, Rudal Shah versus State of Bihar, DK Basu versus State of West Bengal, etc., testify the role of Supreme Court in recognizing the concept of victimization. Though most of these decisions highlighted victimization in the course of criminal justice process and these victims in many cases were the offenders themselves, but the jurisprudential contribution of the Apex Code was the development of victimological jurisprudence. Declaration of 1985 The victim oriented rights and safeguards introduced through the 2008 amendments in the criminal justice system of our country are originally derived either in spirit or otherwise from the 1985 United Nations Declaration of Basic Principles of Justice for Victims of Crime and Abuse of Power. The declaration is considered as the Magna Carta for victims of crime. It provides the basic framework of principles influencing the development of rights of the victims in most of the countries. The declaration defines who a victim of crime is. According to the declaration, victims means persons who individually or collectively have suffered harm including physical or mental injury, emotional suffering, 
economic loss or substantial impairment of their fundamental rights through acts or omissions that are in violation of criminal laws operative within the member states including those laws proscribing criminal abuse of power. Further, while discussing victims of abuse of power, it explains victims to be persons who individually or collectively have suffered harm including physical or mental injury, emotional suffering, economic loss or substantial impairment of their fundamental rights through acts or omissions that do not yet constitute violations of national criminal laws but of internationally recognized norms relating to human rights. The four categories of rights of victims of crime recognized under this are first access to justice and fair treatment, second right to restitution of lost property or payment for the loss or harm suffered, third right to compensation, fourth right to necessary material, medical, psychological and social assistance. The basic principles of the declaration are first victims to be entitled to the mechanism of justice and prompt redress for the harm suffered. Second victims to be informed of their rights in seeking redress through such mechanism. Third informal mechanisms for the resolution of disputes to be utilized to facilitate conciliated redressal of victims grievances. Fourth, Offenders should make fair restitution to victims and restitution should be part of the sentencing in criminal cases. Fifth, when compensation is not fully available from the offender or other sources, state should provide monetary compensation to victims who suffered serious physical or mental injury for which national fund should be set up. Victim justice legislations. However, the legislative structure in India cannot be accused of being completely ignorant of the interests of the victims. Rules of evidence as provided in section 151 and 152 of Indian Evidence Act 1872 protect victims from wit and witnesses from being asked indecent, scandalous, offensive questions and questions intended to annoy or insult them. As provided in section 312 of CRPC 1973, criminal courts are also ob obliged to order payment of reasonable expenses incurred by the witness or complainant for attending the court. Apart from these provisions, because of judicial activism, some basic protective measures for victims and witnesses are now being provided during trial. These measures include holding an in-camera trial procedure that is prescribed by the criminal law. This is a provision which might be useful at times when the testimony of the witness or victim may be otherwise vitiated by a hostile court atmosphere. In addition, courts sometimes order suppression of the identity of a victim or witness from all official documents in order to protect her privacy. The Apex Court has also made a move towards recording of evidence by way of video conferencing. Various statutes even before and after independence like the Fatal Accidents Act 1855, Police Act 1861, the Probation of Offenders Act 1958, the Motor Vehicles Act 1988 did comprise of strings of compensatory jurisprudence which ultimately ensured justice to victims. Criminal Procedure Code 1973, the position prior to the Code of Criminal Procedure Amendment Act 2008. Even before the amendments of 2008 were introduced, CRPC contained provisions relating to compensation to victims and disposal of property involved in the offence which ultimately aimed towards ensuring justice to victims. They are as follows. Section 357, 358 and 359 deal with orders to pay compensation and costs. Section 357 of CRPC attempts to combine and incorporate the idea of punishing the offender as well as provide compensation to the aggrieved party or the victim for the loss or injury suffered by the victim. Under this provision, compensation can be ordered only in cases where the accused is convicted and sentenced. 
Under section 357 subsection 1, compensation can be ordered to be paid only in cases where the accused is punished with a sentence of fine or with some other sentence of which fine formed a part and further the compensation could be paid only out of the fine recovered. However, section 357 subsection 3 tries to provide compensation to persons who are entitled to recover damages from sentenced persons even though fine does not form a part of the sentence. This ultimately broadens the scope of section 357 subsection 3 and makes the power of a magistrate or judge to grant compensation under this provision unlimited. Under section 358, whenever any person causes any other person to be groundlessly arrested, the magistrate may award compensation to the extent of rupees 1000 to the person who is the victim of such arrest. According to section 359, an appellate court, a high court or a court of session in addition to the penalty imposed, it may order the accused to pay to the complainant either in whole or in part the cost which is incurred by the complainant in the prosecution. Provisions relating to disposal of property. Section 451, 452, 453, 454 of the CRPC deal with provisions relating to disposal of property. It tries to ensure that the victim does not suffer. Section 451 is intended to ensure that the owner of the property does not suffer due to the property remaining unused. It empowers the court to pass an interim order for custody of any property pending inquiry or trial produced before the court or related to which an offence appears to have been committed or appears to have been used for committing an offence. Section 452 provides for the disposal of property at the conclusion of an inquiry or trial and empowers the court to order disposal of property by destruction, confiscation, delivery to any person who claims to be entitled to the possession of such property or otherwise of any property or relevant document. Section 453 protects an innocent purchaser in certain circumstances. It tries to ameliorate to a limited extent the hardship that may be caused to such purchaser by providing that he may be compensated out of any money taken from the possession of the person convicted for theft or receiving stolen property who has sold it to such purchaser. Section 454 deals with appeals against orders under section 452 and 453. Now, the position post the Code of Criminal Procedure Amendment Act 2008, Victim Oriented Amendments of 2008. The amendment of 2008 made in the Criminal Procedure Court was largely influenced by the UN Declaration of Basic Principles of Justice for Victims of Crime and Abuse of Power 1985 along with the report of the Committee on Reforms of Criminal Justice System, Ministry of Home Affairs, Government of India 2003 which is also known as the Malimath Committee Report. The Malimath Committee in its recommendations perceived that justice to victims is one of the inseparable imperatives of the criminal justice system in India. As opined by Professor Madhav Menon in his address at the International Conference of the Indian Society of Victimology 2011, he argued for the holistic justice to victims of crime by allowing them as a matter of right in criminal proceedings as well as to seek compensation for loss or injury. The Code of Pros Criminal Procedure Amendment Act 2008 made every effort towards making victim justice more conspicuous. The inclusion of section 2 subsection WA defining a victim was in itself indicative of the legislative intent. It states that victim means a person who has suffered any loss or injury caused by reason of the act or omission for which the accused person has been charged and the expression victim includes his or her guardian or legal heirs. The other amendments brought about in the CRPC through the 2008 amendments are as follows. That's the rights guaranteed to the victims through the 2008 amendment. Section 24 sub clause 8, court may permit the victim to engage an advocate of his choice to assist the prosecution. 
Section 372, victim shall have a right to prefer an appeal against any order passed by the court acquitting the accused or convicting for a lesser offence or imposing inadequate compensation. Section 173 sub clause 1 capital A, section 309 subsection 1 ensure speedy justice proviso to section 26 subsection A, proviso to section 157 subsection 7, proviso to section 327 subsection 2 and section 327 subsection 3 ensures protective rights to the victims of crime, especially women. Section 357A deals with right to compensation. Finally, Section 357A is the landmark introduction made in the CRPC through 2008 amendments of criminal law. The Apex Court in Delhi Domestic Working Women's Forum versus Union of India had laid down certain guidelines for assisting the victims of rape. It provided that, having regard to the directive principles contained under Article 38, sub clause 1 of the Constitution of India, it is necessary to set up the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board. The guideline stated that compensation for victims shall be provided by the court on conviction of the offender and by the Criminal Injuries Compensation Board whether or not a conviction has taken place. The Supreme Court, before the statutory recognition of grant of compensation, has in a number of writ petitions awarded compensation on various grounds. Under Section 357A, the state government, in coordination with the central government, is obliged to prepare victim compensation schemes for compensating victims of crimes. Clauses 2 to 6 of Section 357A CRPC provides that the district and state legal service authority, as the case may be, shall decide the quantum of compensation to be awarded on the recommendation of the court to the victim or his dependents who have suffered loss or injury as a result of crime. The district and state legal service authority, in order to alleviate the suffering to the victim, may provide immediate first aid facilities or medical benefits and award adequate compensation. Upendra Paswan versus State of Bihar 2016 has elaborately dealt with the provisions of Section 357 CRPC and 357 ACRPC, referring to the obligation on the part of the judiciary to apply these provisions to ensure direct justice to the victim. In his judgment, the High Court has referred to Ankur Shivaji Gaikwad versus State of Maharashtra 2013 and quoted, The amendments to CRPC brought about in 2008 focused heavily on the rights of the victims in a criminal trial, particularly in trials relating to sexual offences. Though the 2008 amendments left Section 357 unchanged, they introduced Section 357A under which the court is empowered to direct the state to pay compensation to the victim in such cases where the compensation awarded under Section 357 is not adequate for such rehabilitation or where the cases end in acquittal or discharge and the victim has to be rehabilitated. Under this provision, even if the accused is not tried but the victim needs to be rehabilitated, the victim may request the state or district legal service authority to award him or her compensation. This provision was introduced due to the recommendations made by the Law Commission of India in its 152nd and 154th report in 1994 and 1996 respectively. Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013 The Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013, which came into force on February 3rd, 2013 and received the presidential assent and was published in the Official Gazette on 2nd April 2013, contains amendments which were suggested and intended for a long time. However, the social movement that was uh, launched as a reaction to the Nirbhaya case caused these amendments to see the light of the day. A three-member committee headed by Justice J.S. Verma, former Chief Justice of Supreme Court, Justice Leela Seth, former Judge of the High Court, and Gopal Subramaniam, formal Solicitor General of India, was constituted on December 23, 2012 to recommend amendments to the criminal law in order to assure quicker trial and enhanced punishment for criminals accused of committing sexual assault against women. 
The committee with the support of National Law University Delhi and its students submitted its final report on 23rd of January 2013. The report consisted of recommendations on laws relating to rape, sexual harassment, trafficking, sexual abuse of children, acid attack, medical examination of victims, police elect, uh, electoral and educational reforms. The amendments uh, which majorly have an impact on the victim justice include sections 166A, 166B of IPC, proviso to section 154, 161 subsection 3, 273 and section 309 subsection 1, 357B, 357C of CRPC. Section 166A and 166B of IPC deal with public servants who disobey directions given to them under any law. Section 166A IPC states that if any public servant disobeys any provision or direction of law shall be subject to rigorous imprisonment for a period which may range between 6 months and 2 years and shall also be liable to fine. Section 166B states that whoever being in charge of hospital contravenes the provision of Section 357C of CRPC shall be punished with imprisonment up to one year or with fine or with both. The amendment provides for the insertion of a proviso to Section 154 subsection 1 of CRPC. The proviso states that <clears throat> when any information is given by any woman, woman who is the victim of any offence committed or attempted under Section 326A, 326B, 354, 354A, 354B, 354C, 354D, 376, 376A, B, C, D, E or 509 of IPC shall be recorded by a woman police or any officer. It further provides that women that when such a victim is temporarily or permanently mentally or physically disabled, then the information shall be recorded at the residence of the victim or at a convenient place in presence of interpreter or educator and the recording of the information shall be videographed. According to the amendment, the proviso to section 161 subsection 3 of CRPC also provides for recording of information by a woman victim, by a woman police officer. Section 20 of the Criminal Law Amendment Act 2013 provides for the insertion of a proviso prior to the explanation provided to section 273 of CRPC. The proviso reads that when the evidence of a victim of rape or sexual offence who is below 18 years of age is to be recorded, it should be ensured by the court that the woman is not confronted by the accused and at the same time the accused is also assured of his right of cross-examination. In order to ensure speedy trial and quick delivery of justice, the amendment provides for the insertion of subsection 1 to section 309, which talks about trials being conducted at the fastest possible pace without any delay. The new amendment also provides that under section 357B of CRPC, the compensation to be paid under section 357A is to be paid in addition to the fine to be paid to the victim under section 326A or 376D of the IPC. In recognition of the international declaration and standard, the newly inserted section 357C of CRPC provides for an obligation on all state or private hospitals to compulsorily provide free immediate medical aid to the victims of offences under section 326A, 376, 376A, 376B, C, D or 376E of the IPC and then inform the police at the earliest. Victim Compensation Scheme Pursuant to the law enacted under Section 357A CRPC, various state governments have formulated and notified their respective victim compensation schemes. The Ministry of Home Affairs had issued advisories to the states or union territories for framing of the victim compensation scheme on September 7, 2010. Mostly all the states like Delhi, Punjab, Haryana, West Bengal, Uttar Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Himachal Pradesh, Goa, Odisha, Karnataka, Meghalaya, Gujarat, Haryana, Bihar, Tamil Nadu, etc. have formulated their victim compensation schemes. The Central Victim Compensation Fund The Ministry of Home Affairs has introduced a scheme 
called the Central Victim Compensation Fund or CVCF with initial corpus of rupees 200 crores to be sanctioned by Ministry of Finance. The initial fund was to be provided from the Nirbhaya Fund created for tackling matters related to crime or violence against women. According to the Ministry of Home Affairs, the fund was to come into effect from 21st of August 2015. Key objectives of the fund to support and supplement the existing victim compensation schemes notified by states or union territory administrations, to reduce disparity in quantum of compensation amount notified by different states or union territories for victims of similar offences, to encourage state or union territories to effectively implement the victim compensation schemes notified by them under provisions of Section 357A of CRPC and continue financial support to victims of various crimes, especially sexual offences including rape, acid attacks, crime against children, human trafficking, etc. Now, special legislations. With the growth of various social vices targeting the vulnerable sections of the society, disturbing the social order and posing a challenge to the state, there have been developments of some of such legislations which focus on the rights and interests of particular sections of the society who are considered to be underprivileged, deprived or vulnerable. The scheduled castes and scheduled tribes uh, Prevention of Atrocities Act 1989 the Dowry Prohibition Act in 1961, Immoral Traffic Prevention Act 1986, Indecent Representation of Women Prohibition Act 1987, the Prenatal Diagnostic Techniques Regulation and Prevention of Misuse Act 1994, the Juvenile Justice Care and Protection of Children Act 2015, the Protection of Women from Domestic Violence Act 2005, the uh, scheduled tribes and other traditional forest dwellers uh, recognition of Forest Rights Act 2006, the Maintenance and Welfare of Parents and Senior Citizens Act 2007, the Protection of Children from Sexual Offences Act 2012, the Sexual Harassment of Women at Workplace Prevention Prohibition and Redressal Act 2013, the Right to Fair Compensation and Transparency in Land Acquisition, Rehabilitation and Resettlement Act 2013 are such kinds of legislations. To conclude, it can be said that it is incorrect to state that the Indian criminal justice system was completely oblivious of the need of victim sensitization in the legislative structure. With international developments, the endeavor of the country towards this objective further gained momentum mainly to achieve the international standards and a comprehensive justice delivery system. Further, with the subject of victimology broadening its horizon, any legislative endeavor pursued with the ambition of assuring the entitlement of rights of those who are denied their legitimate rights or basic human rights in any form comes within the umbrella of victim justice through legislative growth and development. It is rightly said that judicial activism showed the path of delivering justice which would focus on the needs and priorities of victim apart from the rights of the accused. In various recent judgments like State of Himachal Pradesh versus Rampal 2015, Suresh Anada versus State of Haryana 2014, Upendra Paswan versus State of Bihar 2016, etc., the fact gets further indoors that the status of victims in justice delivery process is gaining recognition with every progressing day. Justice to victims as a part of the criminal justice system is possible only through a coordinated effort of the legislature, judiciary and the executive. Ultimately, when an offence is committed, it is the victim who suffers and the laws made to the victim can seldom be restored. Nevertheless, avenues and alternatives ought to be designed to ensure and encourage justice in totality. The effort shown by the legislative department is encouraging, but emphasis on methods like rehabilitation, restitution, mediation, counseling needs to be further incorporated and internalized in the system as rights of the victims cannot be ensured only on the basis of the principles of compensatory jurisprudence. However, primarily we all need to start respecting the rights of every individual, whether he is the accused or the victim. 
The respect that we shall deliver to the victims of crime will indeed be our contribution towards ensuring justice to victims. Thank you.